I'll give you a bit of a brief background first. Um, I have a lot of things to go over. I'll start by talking about Elman because that's what I promised Jeff, and because I find it fascinating. As some of you, most of you know, the propeller is a wonderful chip. Chip did a great job, uh, and it does have some limits. When I started working with it a little bit over two years ago, one of the first things that struck me was that here's this amazing device in a 40 pin chip that's the equivalent of 180 vaxes that used to take uh, the round C shape, if you remember the old things. And I went, wow. Then I started looking into the details and there's 32 kilobytes of hub memory, which is very useful. Then I had to pick myself up off the floor after I realized that it can do NTSC, PAL, and BGA video. Then I went, hey, wait a second here. The old PDP-11 ran Unix in less than, less memory than this with a heck of a lot less horsepower. Then I started looking into C compilers, and I really looked into the details, and I went, uh-oh. There's no way I'm going to be able to write uh, industrial code in C into 496 instructions. So I started looking around, looking at all the instructions, and then at one point, I had one of those aha moments that normal, normally happen in the shard, but fortunately not in this case, is that what's there to stop me, since it uses self-modifying code for indexing, what's there to stop me from reading an instruction through the help into two instructions down, treating one of the registers as a program counter, and then executing it and jumping around and doing the same thing all over again. And I finally get around to uh, testing my assembler uh, and finishing it. I found some, shall we say, multi-legged creatures in the expression evaluator code and in the macro implementation. But I was more concerned with generating correct code. So I verified every single instruction, all the effect codes, and all the conditionals against prop to 1.2.6 to the bit level. So it generates code correctly, which was the most important thing to me. Then I went, why don't I make things easy for people? Uh, the LMM kernel, the one that has the loop that fetches, since it's running out of the main memory, has to have its own versions of jump and call and return and a few, are, a few other instructions because, frankly, the native instruction set does not support a 32-bit argument for a large pointer. That's great. So what I did is I finished the assembler. So guess what? The assembler now you just put in a jump, whether in, you're in regular small model or you're in a large model, and the assembler will figure out the right thing to do. Same for call, same for return. I added, um, I'm adding some stuff like you'll be able to load a 32 bit constant following the instruction, and it'll decode use jump threads to set the address. And basically, it's making writing element code just as simple as PASM code, but without the limits. I had the beginnings of what I wanted to do originally. So I started writing a little operating system. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. um, I happen to be a huge Linux user. And I used to run SunOS way back when, etc. And thus, Largos is being gestated right now. It's not born yet. But if you come by, I can show you a Unix-like shell. With, uh, with over two dozen Unix commands already implemented. So, Largos is loosely based on Unix. The current kernel's message list consists of approximately 90, 94 messages. STDIO equivalent is available. There's a full flash file system which also does automatic wear leveling. So the flash chips will run a lot longer. Um, there's a Unix-like shell, and yes, it does execute shell scripts. Uh, dynamically loadable device drivers, which are loaded from slash etc slash modules, which some of you may find familiar. Uh, the startup script happens to live in slash etc slash rc.local, which again may be somewhat familiar. Uh, it's not finished, but I'm really excited about it. So what I did instead is I went, what would a nice little computer for the propeller look like if it had to address the industrial control market and the education market, and it had to be the ideal platform for my operating system. So Morpheus was born. 
I call it Morpheus not because of Neo and the Matrix, <laughs> but because you can morph it into many different platforms depending on how you populate it and what options you use. Number one feature that a lot of people find interesting is 256 colors in VGA. Per pixel in some modes. Morpheus has two propellers on it. The one propeller is to be used for large model code and or fancy graphics. Two sockets for SPI memory. I am using the second socket for a 32 kilobyte SPI RAM so that I can edit 32 kilobyte text files or use it for any other use easily without having to communicate to the other propeller and some other designs. In other cases, the kernel just makes a call from one kernel to the slave kernel and say, hey, give me this range of bytes at this location and you'll get it. Or I'm sending you something. Or I'm sending you a device driver, load it up. Or run this spin program at this location. The kernel currently is written in spin. It is being translated into LMM now that I have a working good LMM similar. Let's see. Of course, three and a half, uh, sorry, 3.3 .3 and 5 volt regulators. If you need IO more than flash or RAM, you can not populate the two SPI memories and you have 16 bits of propeller IO available. That's what I meant by Morpheus. You can really configure it many ways. If you don't want 256 colors because you don't want to limit it to my drivers, fine, populate the resistor DAC session differently and you can run all the standard parallax video drivers you want. Now, after Morpheus, there's the MemPlus board. Guess what? It holds four DIP32 memory chips. And guess what? You can plug four of them into the Morpheus board because they stack. They stack vertically. You also have SD card socket. <laughs> And you also have an additional 16 IOs coming to two 10-pin, two by five headers for any kind of IO you want. So, any questions? How many IO signals do you have that come to the school board to use? Uh, the school board has the full 24-bit uh, address 8-bit data parallel bus. So you can use parallel IO by doing a bit of address decoding. And it also has P0 through P7 coming and also potentially P8 through P15 if you don't use the flash or SPI RAM. I would recommend that you do keep the flash on because Largos will require it. And there will be a version of the LMM kernel that runs the code out of XMM. So theoretically, one could write uh, almost, two mega, uh, almost two million instruction LMM program with the board. Next question. I am using a multiplex clean. Oh, but thank you. Very good question because I should probably say that I am getting 20 megabytes per second burst reads and writes from my memory bus. That is how come I'm able to do 1024 by 768 XGA with four colors per pixel. I am using a 16 bit page register. It takes five instructions to change pages, and within the page, you can go to any of 256 addresses with one instruction. Next, please. Running the larger programs, uh, that can be done with spin and not just EASM? That would require parallax modifying spin, but there is there will be no limit within Largo stopping larger than 32 kilobytes spin programs. It would require a new spin interpreter that was able to address XML memory, but it is quite possible. Oh, by the way, Largo supports well, up to about 200 different virtual machines at a time, and you can flag each executable as to which virtual machine it needs to run with. Is there any language besides your assembler that I can use to write applications with? Uh, not at this time. However, ImageCraft is looking to support Largos, and ROS is looking to support Largos as well. Next question. Oh, yes. How close to Unix standard are your device drivers? No. So it's going to be very close, but there are going to be some differences. Documentation will mostly consist of a synopsis, initially at least, of a synopsis of the Unix call and the differences from it. Okay, um, well, you have open, close, read, write, I up. I already have up and running uh, so all, all those interfaces. The vast majority of them. All, I have a sufficient subset. To input so that most source will require very minor changes to compile. So thank you all. You're all welcome to come by.